What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We are back on another episode and working on this old grill. This old jalopy belongs to a really good mate of mine, Rex. And um, it's, I think it's gone through a few different hands. It originally came from, from the States. It had been raced at Trog. Uh, it was a sport coupe that's been converted into a roadster, sort of. Um, and we are gonna be working on a hood. So he has owned this for quite a few months now, probably nearly a year. You may have seen it in a video where we went out and raced the race car with the Scotsman and that uh, out at that little private speedway track. Um, and this little banger goes like the clappers. It's, it, it's, it's pretty wild how, how clean and smooth it runs. Um, and it's just got a little Burns intake with a 97 on it. And uh, I think it's just kind of been, you know, a little gone through before he purchased it. And uh, it's definitely had a little tickle and a freshen up. So. It's, um, yeah, it's a really fun little car. So today we are going to make a hood for this. We're gonna use the English wheel and a template, some cardboard, some tape, maybe a few welding rods. We're gonna use aluminum, very similar to what we did on the race car. We're gonna punch a bunch of louvers into it as well. He wants as many as we can kind of fit on there. We're gonna use some leather belts to hold it down. That was kind of a, an idea he had. Um, so he's off in the men's section of best buy best and less or whatever it's called getting uh, four leather cheap belts and we're gonna um, make them look pretty cool and hold it down and uh, and then in a couple weeks time we'll be racing this the race car the Scotsman's coming quite a few other guys we're gonna go up to Collie and do a few laps around the track so we'll uh, definitely be doing a, a little video on kind of you know like a, a day's prep on the race car getting everything ready um, and then we'll obviously have a, a video on the actual race itself. So I think it's just a track day, a bit of fun. You can go out and more of test and tune, not actually a race. We're gonna get stuck right into this right bloody now. Before we're going to do anything, obviously we want to just measure making sure our um, radiator and our grill shell is square to the body and also the body is square to the frame. So if everything's out, your hood's out, everything kind of looks weird. So I did a little measurement already. I already know that this side is about half an inch closer. So I need to just tweak the bottom two bolts that hold the radiator and the, the, um, the shell itself. What I do want to quickly show is uh, I think like the first thing I do before making anything like this is just running a tape line, just to see our height differences between the cowl and the grill. Um, now, we wanna make sure that everything kind of like flows nicely off the top of this cowl um, and then kind of flows into the grill. You don't want a hood that's like coming up or, you know, level looks fine, but you don't want something that's kind of shooting up towards a grill that's a little bit higher. So I do wanna just quickly show with this one, we've kind of locked out already. I kind of assumed it was going to be good, but you can kind of see if Ben gets down and runs off, we have a really nice plane. So it's kind of running on a downward slope um, and looks quite clean. Another thing too that we want to cover, we could, Rex and I kind of briefly went over it before we went out belt hunting, um, was running a, like where to finish the hood itself. So on the race car, we had that swage line that came down and uh, you know, we kind of ran that line just so that your eye carried right through. With this one, this is obviously a swage line right here. So we could just run it across here. That would probably look realistically the best. It might be a little bit short, um, like, or shallow I should say. So there's still a lot of exposed area here. But running off that line straight through, your eyes carry it. It does kind of look quite nice. Otherwise we could bring this down and kind of run the hood right over and you know come really low if we wanted to but realistically I think this is our that's our that's our point right there I think that'll definitely look the best yeah so I think you know if we were to run a line kind of just by eye like that and that that line kind of just runs straight into that suede line that goes right down the whole car yeah so 
I reckon something like that. Nice and simple. Um, you know, easy lift off. It's covering what it needs to cover. We'll make a template, we'll transfer it, we'll cut it out, we'll get some louvers punched. So what I've done here, just use some filler rod that I use. This is aluminum. It's probably a little bit soft. I'd almost use steel if I were to redo it. They just kind of help you get a little bit of a form. You can put as many as you like. What I also grab, just a seamstress tape, and this is going to help out really well with replicating both sides. So um, I've kind of allowed a center line. This is actually my center bar. And what I can do is kind of run this down measure and we can flip it on to the other side. I'm using um, like butcher's paper that we usually pack up our shirts with because um, I can't find my other like kind of between this and the other cardboard we're about to use. Another tip I should have done, which I usually do, is the blue line underneath. If, if you, I did it on the grill. If you use that initially over top and you make your gap right, you can kind of see straight through and you could do like a really clean line on that. I didn't, however, do that on the back side. So I am just going to kind of trim it close enough um, with allowing a little bit of, of uh, excess material. Then I can trim that to fit. So what we're going to do is pull this off, cut this out, and then I'll lay this on top of our, uh, our cardboard afterwards, trace that out, and then we'll just lay that down and it'll kind of show any imperfections. It's a little bit like thicker. Um, so it'll just kind of hold its shape a little bit better than this stuff. We'll trim it. Um, yeah, rather than cutting it out, I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna transfer it. I'm just gonna use a center punch.
Okay, so we've put it on. We kind of naturally use the curve of the cardboard in that roll because it obviously has a bit of a memory and it really helps kind of, you know, display the, the cardboard properly over top of it. Uh, and what I did was obviously, like I said, had made it a little bit bigger along the edges and I was able to use my little blade and I was able to follow the body line of the cowl itself and the edge of the grill to get a really accurate, um, you know, cut. So what I'll probably do, actually, no, I don't even need to do that. I was going to say what I'll do is I'll leave a little bit, but I won't. I'm just going to trim this. I'll trim this exactly to the aluminum sheet um, and then we can start rolling it and getting it shaped and we'll just keep putting it through, lay it down, put it through, lay it down and, um, and we can go from there. Josh had mentioned before I got the Roadster t-shirt on which is essentially what we're building over there and this is Lee's t-shirt I bought off him many moons ago. He is on YouTube, I've mentioned him before, LG Speed and Custom. He's, uh, he's actually building a two-door, 32 two-door sedan. Um, so he's kind of a few steps ahead of us on the chassis. He's uh, already started, he's painted it. He's got the brake lines done. Um, but yeah, he's kind of explained everything he's doing on there too. So if you jump over to his YouTube page, he'll, um, he'll, he's got a lot of great content. All right. So there we have it. We've got our template. And now we can lay this directly on to the aluminum. So I'm just going to put this cardboard template back on for a sec and then we are going to measure kind of our areas as far as our degree for radius and then we can transfer that. It's going to be a nice, nice fitment, yeah? I'm going to take this guy, we're going to come over here and I was kind of looking at this before, so this is Kind of, um, kind of go straight. Is there a peak? There's a little bit of a. There is a bit of a peak right there, but there's not a peak there. So I'm gonna just have to, kind of, do that one by hand. But that's all right. There. Here to here is a 12. Along here. We are about a 36 and before, yeah, about a four from kind of here to there. Over to our shite. This is 1.2, so it's actually quite thin. So yeah, I just got to make sure when we're running it through the wheel that we're not going to be leaving a heap of wheeling marks, which might happen. I could also use the sheet metal roller too, but I haven't used it enough in order to be able to create like a tighter bend on one side to the other. So we'll figure that out as we go. Come 
drown, you better run for cover Or he's gonna keep you up all night He's gonna take you out and get you lit and call your brother Here in the plate, out of the fire He'll leave you knocked down, sitting crying for your mother And when you're on the ground, he'll pick you up and say, have another boy So Ben and I have just been on the wheel. We've run it through a few times, kind of changing the die as we go. I do have tape on that upper wheel, so we are getting a two-dimensional shape, not a three-dimensional shape, because that's all we're trying to get is just a little bit of that initial curve. Um, what happens too is I kind of counted my tracks, then we're all having chats here and kind of forgot about them. On the inside here, when we were running our initial 36 radius, I didn't run it right off. So this area has all these wheel track marks where they've kind of stopped along here. And you can see that there's a lot of, there's tension in there that wants to be released. So if I kind of turn it that way, it kind of pulls out. And then on this side, you can see how it dips down. So that, that needs to be stretched out because we've stretched this area and this corner hasn't been done. When it lays down, it's actually quite nice and flat. But what I'm going to do is just in this one little area, I might just a little bit of low pressure, put a 36 degree um, die in the planishing hammer and we're just going to run a few passes on and hopefully that'll kind of just release that tension that we have. <laughs> So we're kind of just battling with, I think I put like a bit of three-dimensional shape, maybe didn't have enough tape on the wheel. And then where I was trying to kind of stretch the area, I may have stretched it a little bit too much. So I've just run a few shrinks along there that I can kind of clean up and we'll sand out anyways. But what I do want to do is I might actually just put this break in now and hopefully that'll um, kind of just help us just retain a little bit of the, you know, the integrity of the, of the shape we're trying to, to get. Tip one, always keep your template because you never know when you're going to have to build another one, which I'm about to do. Round two. Round one, looking a little bit sick. It's a bit of a hangover. Won't show too much of that. Um, last night, stayed late, trying to get it done, and I just I did not like the way it fit. Multiple things. One, haven't really worked with a lot of 1.2 aluminum for doing this stuff, usually 1.5, and I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it does make a difference, just that, that little bit. First off, right off the bat, there was already a red flare when I was rolling it. I didn't roll the wheel straight off the material. So we were stretching an area, and I was only stretching it basically to, to like say this end here, and then I was stopping. So this area hadn't been touched. So there was a bit of stress happening, like I was kind of trying to have mentioned, thinking that I could kind of just lightly planish that area and kind of stretch it. But what it, what, what it ended up being was, and I think I mentioned it before, was I didn't have enough tape on that top wheel. So I was, I was actually getting a three-dimensional shape where I was only wanting to get a two-dimensional shape. So I probably didn't have enough tape on the wheel. Um, I don't have an upper rubber bit for that, so I usually just use tape. I feel like the rubber ones that I've had in the past always seem to kick off. So if anyone's got any tips or, you know, certain um, tire tubes that they would use or whatever, definitely let us know. And I had it fitting really, really well, but it was just that one area where we tried to stretch it on the back of the cowl and it was just kicking up. 
So I tried putting it in the shrinker and kind of pulling it down and it wasn't really doing it. And then I thought everything else fit perfectly. I thought I could just do one pass with the thumbnails and maybe that would pull it in enough. Um, it did work. I had the thumbnails and the power hammer. I tried it and it was starting to work and I had to do like a couple more and just being so thin and you know, me still learning about you know, um, shaping with aluminum, especially this thin stuff, um, I, was, I, I split it right away. So I overworked the material, I split it. Um, after I accepted I had done it, then I just started doing a few different passes and kind of learning about it. Thumbnails won't really set up that well. I let my frustration out on the panel and then I shut the door and I left for the day and I've come back in with a uh, new attitude. I think with this one, I'm gonna use the wheel again. I've retaped it and I'm just gonna make sure that I'm wheeling off the panel with that 36 radius just to initially get that kind of curve in the panel that we need and then we can start to work the sides. I got enough material there to make two but hopefully I only need to make one more. <laughs> Okay, so we got some good shape into it. Need to just kind of finesse the corners a little bit. There's a few track lines I want to try and get out if I can. Um, another thing I'm happily, I'll happily admit, well, not happily admit, but I'll admit is um, when I was cutting it in the guillotine, the original um, bit on there, you can see this piece here has got this nice little line. And that line's my cut line. This is my bit that I allowed to do the break underneath like we did on the original one. And I cut that off because I wasn't paying attention. So I kind of shot myself in the foot there and now I'm trying to rectify that in a way that looks like it was supposed to be. So what I did, I luckily allowed myself just a little bit of meat on that. So I was able to put like a five mil break on it, but it's not enough to keep like because this aluminum is so thin and so soft um, it's not any, enough to keep it straight so I've drilled some little holes they're an eighth inch hole every 50 mil uh, and what I'm going to do is put a little break that's this is actually one of them and I'll put another one in and this will just kind of be a, a nice relatively structural piece to hold the integrity of the side of the, the hood especially where we need to make our mounts to pull down on it with the, um, with the belts. I'm gonna use our eighth inch Clecos as well to hold everything into place. So I've already drilled those out. And then on the back side, I've just cleaned all the, the burr off of it. And I'm just gonna use these real tiny little dome head aluminum rivets. I'm just making up a couple of these and they're just a simple U, U shape um, channel. And then that will essentially go up inside like that and then once we clamp this down it's going to take that little bit of bow that's in there out which will be really nice and just kind of allow again for that that weight so and I'll show you we had a win with this one not so much that one I'll just leave it there as a reminder keep calm move on and um, yeah, it's actually really nice. So it fits really well. Obviously there's a little bit of spring in it. 
And I'm not gonna get too crazy with it yet because as soon as we go and put all of our louvers in, this thing is gonna just start like um, a, f a fair amount. So I wanna make sure we have a rough template. It's, well, it's pretty dang close to where I would like to keep it. Um, what I'm just gonna do is mount those things up. We'll run some drill holes through, Clico it all into place, and then we'll start um, riveting it. Oh, I'll ask you see you again, my friend. What do you do? Pick up my guitar Too much on your plane When you need to escape Everything will be better when I find Find a way So those pieces, they're riveted in. They look all right. The hood, still quite floppy, but maybe when we put some louvers in, it won't be so bad. But once this is on and strapped down, a little bit of tweaking, just, just ever so slightly on that one corner, but that is essentially a really nice fitting hood. Uh, next step, I'm going to Lay this down, draw a center line, and we're gonna lay out our um, louving, lou, lou, uh, uh, lay out um, our lines for the louvers. Next door at Liam's place, Southwest Stainless, Bal the balustrade man. Just Jack right here. Jack just got his license. Jack's parents don't know, but he's been uh, doing reverse doughies. Um, okay, so we got his massive hydraulic press. This was kind of a, a, a quick way of doing some louvers on the race car because we haven't quite made the louver press itself, but this thing works really well. So you've probably seen it in previous videos. If you haven't, I've just used a, the T-slot that goes up into this, um, this pocket here for bending. This is kind of your bending block with different various um, bends on it. And what I did was I welded the actual die to it. Very simple bottom piece. It's actually just tacked and then I use a clamp. And then this way I can kind of make sure that when it comes down, 
there's an adjustment height on it. I can get it super close and everything's really square, the edges, and then it comes down and comes all the way up. The best thing is we've just tested it a couple times. I just wanna make sure I'm getting the depth right on each one. And these are just Princess Auto um, louvers from Canada and uh, I've modified them. They, do, they did usually have quite a, a square on them um, and they looked kind of like a newer school, kind of more rectangle looking louver, but I'm really a big fan of the early kind of clamshell or rounded off uh, louvers. So was able to modify this one to get that really nice rounded edge. So after a few test pieces, we are basically ready to go um, and put this in. Okay, so there we have it. My back's telling me we did quite a few levers. levers. Um, but yeah, super pleased with how they came out. As I mentioned, a little bit of distortion, obviously. So we can kind of just play around with that a little bit um, to just try and get a little bit more, more uh, shape and memory in there. But I think once those, you can kind of see it, I pull it in it, and it kind of finds its its way back. Did a little fun punching with the, the letters prior to punching it as well. So we just made a little Bennett's thing there. And it's kind of, it's definitely hand done. Right, so hood's on. I just use a little strap and it's just kind of hooked up behind there. Bit of pressure to pull it in. Looks really nice. Um, on the weekend, I was just kind of playing with a few different ideas. I'd kind of just run around with a scotchy and just kind of textured it a little bit. Um, and then uh, I ended up actually using again that, that stain and kind of stained the aluminum in this area. And it looks really cool. It's just kind of given it a little bit of a hue um, and yeah, kind of almost aged it slightly. Uh, as well as I did just test one of those belts. So, um, you know, they're probably not, you know, the nicest looking. I'd love some genuine leather belts and, you know, use proper hardware and some nice, uh, nice bits like that. But you know, what we're just using what we uh, had supplied. So we'll be able to just pull this off. And then that I've just kind of designed it so that these bits down here that actually have the buckle are quite short. So if he was running around or needed to do some test and tune without the, the, um, the hood on there, he's not gonna have any, uh, any issues with straps kind of hitting anything or, or um, coming into uh, contact with something it's not supposed to. But this could be an option. So we run the kind of the, the buckle, probably try and keep it the same height as that one. And then the other part of the actual belt we could put up inside and I could run two really nice rivets through here. So it would just fall out of the bottom there and lock into place like that. We'll get one side done and then um, I have it kind of everything centered where it's supposed to be. And then we'll go to the other side and then we'll do that and fix it so we get them nice and tight. Um, and then we'll texture the other side of the hood, maybe put some more stain on it. And it's basically a job done.
All right, so I just kind of played around with the red scotch bright, as you saw, and I don't know, put a bit of stain on it just to see what it would look like. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool, kind of matches the car. We're not trying to go for perfect with this one. Um, you know, there's probably a few wheeling marks that I can kind of still see through there. Um, again, being real thin, probably could have maybe put a bit more tape on it or, or less pressure um, and maybe wheeled those out a little. But I think it just, you know, kind of overall suits, suits the car. Um, pretty happy with the way the belts turned out. We, uh, we were able to, you know, as you saw, put the rivets through on the backside with a nice washer. So they're, the belt, the, they're fixed on the back and the front and then you just disconnect them and put them on. But I think Rexy's idea of having them kind of in that little void of the uh, cowl really, really kind of set it off. Um, and uh, yeah, it just kind of doesn't complicate it too much. So once the Scotsman makes his nice, nice um, headers on this side, that'll go into to a pipe, it'll, I think it'll look really good. So definitely A side for sure. But um, yeah, really happy with the way they turned out. We'll see how long the, uh, the pleather belts last. But um, yeah, I think it's, it was pretty fun to build. And, and um, yeah, I think it just overall, you know, kind of helps the, helps the car visually. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Kind of a simple, simple video, just utilizing a few of the tools, but just having, having a bit of fun with this one. So, um, you know, the, I like doing the creative bits. So this was, uh, this was fun to get my head around. Unfortunately, the first hood, that one will stay outside for now as a reminder not to get too angry. Yeah, make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Bennett's Customs. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah,